my message today is going to be entitled Dangers of Admission. But before I get into that, let's pray. Father God, we thank you again for this day. We're truly mindful of all that you're doing in and through our lives in a great and mighty way. Father, I thank you for each and every person that is hearing this message today, that you'll bless them in a great and mighty way. Father God, I believe that we'll have attentive ears and receptive hearts that we're going to receive from you today. And Father God, we continually thank you for everything that is said and done. All glory, all honor goes to you, and it's not about us. And Father, we worship you and thank you for all that you've done in our lives in a great and mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My title, and I'm going to give it to you the way that God has shared this with me, is called Dangers of Admission. And I'm going to have to tell on myself a little bit. Years ago, I did not want to get a cell phone. My wife had one. It finally got to be with a point where it was kind of necessary for me to get one. And I kind of resisted. But I'll tell you what, when I've got it, the first thing that I noticed, I kept continually getting these messages on my phone that would say, update now, you need an update. And I don't know how many of you would have that on your phone, but when mine would come up, it would say, update now or later, I always clicked later, because it seemed like whenever I wanted to use my phone, I didn't want to take the time for it to be downloaded, so I would say later. The problem happened to be, it wasn't very long before my phone began to malfunction. And I realized it was because I was not getting the continual updates that I needed. And then I begin to see where God began to show me how many of us as believers, God is wanting to continually update and download things into our life. And we're saying, later. And we get to the point where our lives could malfunction to where the point where we're not going to be really useful for the kingdom of God because we're malfunctioning. So I want to encourage you that this message today is about seven areas. I've got seven points, and I think seven points. You will not be here all day, I promise you. We'll get to them kind of quickly. But I wanted to lay a foundation with three passages of Scripture. The dangers of admission. Here's what God tells us from his word. Be on guard. Stand firm in your faith, in God, respecting his precepts and keeping your doctrine sound Act like mature men and be courageous and be strong. Why do we need to do that? Why do we need to be alert? Because to keep Satan from taking advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his schemes and devices. And the last one that I want to share with you is taken from Hebrews chapter 12. Because I'm telling you, in these last days that we're in, This whole world seems like everything around us is being shaken. Here's what God said in his word. Now this expression, yet once more, indicates the removal and final transformation of those things which can be shaken. That's possible. But that is which has been created so that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. We want the word of God to remain in our lives in a great and mighty way. So... My seven topics, the first one I want to share with you is called running low on supply. Well, I want you to know an illustration. This truly happened years ago, the Rose Bowl Parade, right? Rose Bowl Parade is a total distance of 5.5 miles in distance. What was unique about this particular one is Standard Oil who has vast resources and probably more gas supply of anybody in the world, their float in that parade ran out of gas (laughs) in 5.5 miles. What my point being is everything on the outside looked extremely beautiful, the roses and everything about it. But you know what? What was on the inside was empty. God does not want you and me to be empty. He wants us to continually be filled with him in a great and mighty way. And you know what? What was interesting about this, the 5.5 miles, that float stopped, but guess what? It held up everything else around them. Till someone went and got a gas can, and 20 minutes later, they came back and filled up the float so they could continue. My point being is, when you're low on supply, you're going to affect everyone else around you. And we can't be 
doing that in these last days. We need to be continually filled with the knowledge of God. Ephesians 5.18 tells us, be filled with the Spirit. In that, it tells us that word filled out of the Greek means it's a continual flow. It's a continuous flow in our lives. And that's how God wants you and I to be. Paul dealt with this too when he spoke to those that were in Colossae and those that were in Philippi in both chapters to the Philippians and in Colossians in the first chapter. He tells you, be continually filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We are to have that continual flow in our lives. God does not want us to be running on empty. My second danger of omission is commonplace. How many do you know today are treating the word of God as just common? My illustration is Old Faithful. I don't know how many of you have ever been there, but it's quite an amazing sight to see. And what's interesting about it is it will shoot into the air 80 to 150 foot gust of water. And it does it 17 times a day. And they can determine how, when the next one's going to be, because how long the last one erupted. And it, it may last for a minute and a half, up to five minutes. But I want you to know, at that site, there's a restaurant there. It's called Old Faithful Snow Lodge. And what's interesting about this place, one whole long wall is nothing but glass. It's quite a spectacular sight to see if you happen to be there. And it's got a clock on the wall because they can do it. And it has a little countdown telling you when the next eruption is about to take place. And you know what everybody does. Everybody gets up, crowds around the window, and watches a tremendous display of power. But you know what? Happen to notice the waiters and the waitresses, they go on about business as usual. They don't even stop to pay attention to what is taking place. A magnificent display of power. Why? It's become a commonplace. We as Christians don't want to treat the things of God as commonplace. Every time we're in his presence, it should be a display of his mighty working power. That's what he did when he saved you and I. We should be wanting to treat everything pertaining to God as it truly is a magnificent display of his power. And I want you to understand uh, Let's read uh, Hebrews 4.16. Do we have that one? Hebrews 4.16. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us as sinners. We need to make sure that we are doing that. God will meet us at every area and level of our expectation. My third potential is mission is do we treasure the word of God. This truly happened back in 1953 when Queen Elizabeth II was about ready to take her coronation. She was in the church and someone handed her a Bible with a note on it. And I want to read it so I make sure I get it exactly correct. The words inscribed on this Bible says, this is the greatest treasure that earth could afford. And I want you to know, standing at the altar, she took that Bible and she kissed it, and here's the words that she said. The things which I have before promised, I will perform and keep them, so help me God. About 45 years ago, I was in a church service, and of course, I was a little younger then. There was a gentleman that was in the church who was an elderly, little old Italian man. And what was interesting about him, he was in his 90s, spoke very broken English, but the one thing you could get from him is you knew that he loved God and he worshiped God. But every time he came to church, I'd see him walk into the door with his Bible. And here's how he came in. His Bible was so precious to him, he counted it as the greatest treasure in life. And really, in life, that's what we should be doing. And even when, and I have to admit, there were times that when other things were going on, and he was by himself. 
I just want to do observing. And I would see him over there caressing his Bible, and sometimes I even saw him kiss it. He truly loved the Word of God. And you and I really truly need to love the Word of God also. Psalms 119, 162, it says, I rejoice at your word as one who finds a great treasure. The word of God should mean that much to us, should it not? And I also want you to see from Isaiah 53, 5, something I want to pull out of But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. And the chastisement he needed to obtain, peace and well-being for us, was upon him. Three things in that passage of Scripture. I want you to notice it talks about iniquities, which deals with the spirit of mankind. I also want you to know it talks about the chastisement of his peace. That's for the soul of man, which is made up of the mind, the will, and emotions. And then thirdly, he, by his stripes we were healed. That was our physical well-being. I want you to know that God came for the total man, spirit, soul, and body. Do we treasure that? We should. Number four, fourth potential omission. Do we disregard the Holy Spirit? You know, Jody and I, we, we like to go on cruises, and we've gone on quite a few. But I want you to know, every time that we've boarded a ship, I know, want you to know that ship has been equipped with radar. It's looking at everything that's out in front of it. It's equipped with sonar, being able to see everything that is below the water surface. It has compasses. It has maps. It has everything that we would possibly need. It's even got charts. Everything that we would need for a safe journey. But I want you to know, I would never go on that without having a licensed pilot. We, too, need to have that licensed pilot. We've got maps We've got charts. We've got everything in this word that has been given to us. But I would never want to try and navigate this life without my leader of the Holy Spirit, the leading of the Holy Spirit. And you and I shouldn't either. We need that in every realm and walk of life. 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that the scripture was given for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction. We need that for our lives. God's other answer for our life is found in Romans 8, 14. And it says, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And we need that for our life. And I want you to know, he's given it to us. Everything in this word, this Bible. How many of you remember that song? I remember as a kid growing up, the B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me. Well, I want you to know, This is exactly what it's about. That B-I-B-L-E stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. That's my, (laughs) that's my term. And we should treat this as such. This should have everything in here that we have need for in our life. Our fifth potential admission, do we leave God out of government? And I know this is the time of year we're entering into a critical time as our nation, but how many of us have left God out of government? Could you imagine what the world would have been like had Daniel not found favor in Babylon? He had the ear of the king, and so he was a righteous man. He did not do anything that would have been displeasing to God, but God gave him a position of authority And we need to understand, as we're coming up on uh, on this time and election time, we need to seek the face of God. We need to put people in there that have godly values. And I'm not telling you who to vote for. I'm just saying we need to vote. Because there was a thing, I just found this last week. Arizona State Christian College put out a survey that they said that 31 million Christians will probably not vote in November. I don't understand that. 
We need to, it's to see the, the heart of God. But you know what they also said, which gave me encouragement? In the survey at the end, this was just last week, they said if every pastor in the land would begin to encourage their people, they believe that at least five more of those 31 million would probably vote. So we can't leave God out of our government, okay? I want to show you something. Let's go to Isaiah 33, 6, could we? Isaiah 33, 6 says, Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of your salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. But I want you to see something. Let's skip down to verse 22. Verse 22 says, For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, and the Lord is our king. He will save us. That's God. God said that. Well, how does that match up with us? Judge. Judicial system for us. That's the Supreme Court, right? The lawgiver. That's legislative. That would be Congress. And then the king, or what we know is the executive branch, would be our president. God is very concerned about everything that is taking place in our government. The sad part is, is many of us in the church, churches worldwide, we've allowed the devil to control other areas. And it shouldn't be. You know, there's what's known as seven cultural mountains. Government happens to be one of them. And this is what the Lord laid upon me to share today. But there are others. There's another in religion. Do you know that we've got many churches that have allowed the devil to come in and totally try to rewrite what God's intended plan was for mankind? We need to adhere to the word of God. We need to make sure that every area of our life and even including media. I want to say one thing. I'll just say it out there. I'm going to tell you if most of your information that you're getting is from the media, your demise is self-inflicted. Here's where our source should be coming from. We should be allowing God to give us a direction in every realm and walk of life. Proverbs 29.2. We have that. Proverbs 29.2. It says... If a ruler pays attention to lies, all of his servants become wicked. That's why it's so important that we we hone in on to what God's desire for our life truly is. A sixth potential admission, laying aside God's word because of the traditions of men. You know, there's many that, that we have adopted that aren't from God's word. We need to know what God's word says. Let's go to Mark chapter 7, and I want to start in verse 8. It says, You disregard and give up and ask to depart from the command of God and cling to the tradition of men, keeping it carefully and faithfully. Verse 9, he says, And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting, distorting, and nullifying, and doing away with the commandment of God. In order to keep your tradition your own human regulations. You know my Bible here, it's in red, so you know what I know? Jesus said that, and that's what he said. We can allow the traditions of men to nullify or make void the word of God. I don't want to be guilty of that at all, and I know that you don't either. But then, here's look what he says uh, in verse 13. Thus you nullify and making void and of no effect the authority of the word of God through your tradition, which you in turn hand on, and many things of this kind you are doing. We don't want to do that. We don't. And back then, what was the complaint? They were saying, your disciples aren't washing their hands properly before they're going and in eating. Do you know Paul had to deal with another issue? They were telling, and uh, Paul had to go out and correct it. They were telling it was no one should be marrying at all. Well, that doesn't even line up with the Word of God. It says in the Word of God that man should not was to be left alone, right? And so those are things. But I was thinking about this. What are some of the things that we might encounter today? How many of you ever encountered and run into somebody and say, I'm going to get to heaven because I'm a good person. I do good works. 
It's not about your works. It's not about what you do. It's about the relationship that you have created and established with the Father God in heaven. That's the only thing. It's nothing that you've done. And I'm going to share another one with you. How many people today do you say they have a worship of Mary, the mother of Jesus? That's not biblical. I'm just being honest with you. It's not biblical at all. And I thank God for her life. I thank God for her faithfulness. But you know what? She was faithful just like Noah was, just like Daniel and many of the other prophets and those that we read in the word of God. And the Bible tells us as we're looking at things, it says it always refers to Jesus and his mother. It never says Mary and Jesus. It, the preeminence is always given to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we cannot allow the traditions of man to hold us back. The seventh potential omission, not renewing your mind to the word of God. When we don't renew our mind to God's word, we're liable to remain carnal. And we're going to damage ourselves with our thoughts of unbelief, fear, or maybe unforgiveness. We'll probably even have difficulty navigating our way around the Word of God. We'll probably even be susceptible to false teaching or even potentially drifting away from God. And as they get ready to come back up here, I want to share a couple more things with you if the praise team will come up. I want you to know that if you and I were to go out here, right down here to the banks of the the Ohio River, and we put a canoe in the river and we just get in that canoe, and we don't do anything, where do you think we're going to end up? Pittsburgh or Steubenville? Well, I'll tell you, we're going to be in Steubenville. Why? Because that's the way that the current's flowing. You don't have to do anything to get to Steubenville. Can you make Pittsburgh? Yes, you absolutely can. But it's going to require you and I to be able to put our spiritual oar in the water and begin to paddle upstream and probably even paddle against the things that are all around you. It may even go against all the things that are happening around us. We're going to go upstream because we know what this says. And I've chose to follow this. How about you? And so when we do that, we're going to find that when we honor God, in a great and mighty way. Proverbs 10, 17 says this, he who heeds instruction and correction is not only himself in the way of life, but also in the way of life to others. You have a great influence on everyone else around you in a great and mighty way. And I want you to know, I'm gonna share one last scripture But I want you to know this final thought. You're not fighting for victory. You're fighting from victory. The victory has already been given to you and to me. We just need to be willing to walk in that victory. Amen? Amen. And I want to share this last passage of Scripture. Hebrews 10, 35 and 36. It says, do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence for it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. For you have need of steadfast patience and endurance so that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God and thus receive and carry away and enjoy to the full that which is promised. I don't know about you, If any one of these areas that you've said, man, I need to be better at that. I want to ask you this morning, first of all, if you've not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I want to give you that opportunity today. And I would love for you to come down here and we'll have people ready to pray with you. But I also, I'm going to do something a little different. Is that okay? God woke me up between three and four o'clock this morning and I saw this and I'm just going to be obedient to do it I'm going to come down here momentarily in the front and I would ask all of you if you would like to to come down here and join with me and let's just stand before the Lord as they're going to pray and sing and if you're accepted Jesus Christ as Savior for the first time this morning that's okay 
You can come and tell us. Tell me. Tell someone that's with you. Because I've got a, a brand new Bible that I want to equip you with. I want to give that to you. And if not, if you're a believer, let's just come down here and let's worship the Lord together this morning. Amen. Amen. Glory to God.